Parto? Um, first, you need to be introduced. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to this new session of Primo Talk. We're very glad to have as today's speaker, Sara Somariva from University of Genova. Sara got her PhD in 2017 at the University of Genova, and then she moved to Alto University in Finland, two years postdoc fellowship. And then she moved back to Genova, where she's now a postdoc at the Department of Mathematics at the University of Genova. So um, Sarah's main research is about uh, inverse problems and medical imaging inverse problems. Um, uh, in particular, uh, she worked on MG, EEG. But today she's going to give a talk, a very exciting topic. Um, which is the study of the dynamical system model for chemical reaction networks. So please, Sara, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Monica, and thank you for the very nice presentation and for this invitation to this talk. As Monica said, my main topic of research is a little bit different from this one because I have a past in Bayesian methods for EMG and DG data analysis. But what I'm going to talk today about is uh, instead one of our latest work on uh, a model based on dynamical system for loss and gain of function mutation. To give an idea about what I'm going to talk about, this is the structure of the talk. First, I will try to convince you that our work has an interest from a biological perspective. Then I will provide you with the, the mathematical background that is required to understand our model. Then I will present the model we introduced and the application, its application and validation in, uh, for colorectal cancer. And finally, if there will be time, I will uh, give you some idea about a more recent work on a Newton-based approach for finding the equilibrium of the ODE system that describe our chemical reaction networks. So to start, uh, which is the bi biological motivation of our work, the idea is that each extra cell, X pro process that translates extracellular signal into intracellular, intracellular signal is governed by complex network of chemical reactions. And the other important thing is that diseases cancer arise when in this network appear a group of mutation that affect one or more of the proteins that are involved in these networks. Based on this fact, there, there, um, there are a group of drugs that are called targeted drugs that work by um, acting on specific protein of the network and inhibiting or um, activating their, their activity so that in this way, these drugs are able to restore the, be the original behavior of the network. The idea of our work is, okay, this is the background. What we can do is to simulate, simulate somehow numerically the effect of both mutation and drugs. And in, the, in this way, we can, for example, help the medical doctor to um, try different drugs. And for example, to guess which are the, the drugs that are likely to work or not. And then, for example, the medical doctor can start concentrating concentrate only on, that, on those drugs. So our idea is that with this simulation tool, we may be able to speed up the experimental procedures that is required to um, uh, validate a new, a new target therapy. So this is more or less the biological motivation. I hope I convinced you. What we did from a mathematical point of view is we start from this huge chemical reaction network. These are a little bit of numbers to give you a, an idea about the dimension. So this, this network involves 400, more than 400 proteins that are the nodes of these huge graphs. The chemical reaction that uh, describe the interaction among these proteins are more than 8, uh, 800 for a total of 10 interactive pathways. So there are 10 groups of, of proteins that interact each other in the way depicted in these graphs. From a mathematical point of view, okay, we start from these graphs and we want to simulate, to compute numerically, which are the concentration of the protein when 
uh, the, the cell reach an equilibrium prior to mitosis. What we mean with equilibrium is we want to compute the asymptotically stable state of the dynamical system that is built starting from this graph by applying mass action kinetics. I will give you a little bit of detail with an example about how this is done. But the idea is that this, the ODE system that you write in something like that, in which X represent the protein concentration. So each component of, of X is the concentration of one of the nodes of the graph. K are the rate constant of the chemical reaction. So somehow the, each component of K tells you the speed at which the reaction happened. Then V and S are two objects called reaction fluxes and stoichiometric metrics that essentially describe formally these graphs, and, but I will give you a little bit of detail later. And S con zero is simply the uh, initial value of this Cauchy problem, and it's something that tells you if the graph that you are considering model a healthy cell, a physiological cell, or a mutated cell. So to try to explain you how this is built, this is an toy example with just six chemical reactions and six proteins. So what we do is, okay, we have this set of reactions. We look at which are the proteins that are involved. So for example, A, A2, B, and then the compound A to B and so far so on. And then we apply mass action kinetics. What does it mean? It means that, for example, if we want to build the ODE for the X1, so for the first protein, we look at the reaction in which it is involved and we write the reaction fluxes of the reaction. That is, we write down which is the actual speed of this reaction. And this is made by assuming that we take the, the parameter K and we multiply it by the concentration of the react reactants of this reaction. So for example, for this protein, for this reaction, it's gonna be something like K1 times the concentration of A times the concentration of A, so these terms. And then to be the, the ODE, what we do is we put a minus if A, so in this, that is a compound we are considering now is the reactant or a plus if it's, a, a, the result of the reaction. So more or less this idea, the idea, you write this system of, of, of ODE, and then you just apply some linear algebra, some simple algebra uh, to write down it in this form. So you have the set of derivative times the stoichiometric matrix times the, the reaction fluxes. So once you have this system of body, the first step you do is to compute the so-called conservation law. So you look for linear combination of the uh, concentration that remain constant with time. And we will see later on why these are important. But the nice fact is that it's really simple to compute this gamma because you just have to compute the kernel of the transpose of the stoichiometric matrix. Another thing that is, is going to be useful in, later on is the mm, concept of, of the so-called elementary chemical reaction network. And here the idea is that you compute all the conserve a, a set of generator of the conservation law, and you check if when you write these metrics, that essentially just is obtained by just putting as row the concentration vectors you check if this matrix contains a minor equal to the identity matrix. If this is true, you are able to find the set, the corresponding, this, the protein corresponding to the column of this N of, of the important proteins that are called elementary species. To give you an, an idea about what elementary species has, we can go back to our example. And the idea is, okay, you have this set of reaction. This was a stoichiometric matrix we, we built before. We look for the conservation law. By just looking at the matrix, we can see that, for example, these two row are proportional one to the other. These two row correspond this one to X3, so the third uh, species, and this one to the sixth, sixth one. And so you have this conservation law. 
by doing a little bit, but just a little bit more of math, you can compute all the conservation law. Then you can write down the matrix N, and you can see that there is a, a, a minor three per three equal to the identity matrix. And, and the nice thing is that if you look at which are the species that are associated to this minor, are exactly the three species that are A, B, C, that are somehow the basic one. Because if you look at all the other one, these are compounds that are simply obtaining by combining these basic species. And these are what we call the elementary species in our chemical reaction network. So the last definition uh, before going to our work is the, the concept of stoichiometric compatibility class. Again, it's a rather simple one because what you do is okay, you take again all the conservation law. You, sorry, this, this, this is a mistake of course, but the idea is that you take a vector X of, of uh, concentration and you look to all the other vec vectors that satisfy this equation. So the idea is that you build a, a surface in which you have fixed the value of this constant, C1, Cp, and then you, you, you look at all the species that satisfy this, this, uh, this relationship. What is nice is and why these surfaces are important, this because if you look at the solution of the system of volume you have built, the dynamic has to stay, has to be constrained on this surface. So if you start from a point X zero, then you are gonna move around this surface and you are gonna arrive to the equilibrium point. But another important property that we introduce is, is the concept of global stability condition. That is a property that is nice if it is satisfied by, the, by, by our chemical reaction network that tells us that if you start from another point of the same surface, of, you are gonna, of course, you're gonna move on the surface, but the fact is that you're gonna arrive to the same equilibrium, always to the same equilibrium point, because a chemical action actor satisfies this condition if there is only one equilibrium point for each stoichiometric compatibility class. Okay, so this was a little bit of background. What we did was, we start from a chemical reaction network modeling. We assume that it models a physiological cell and we ask ourselves how we can introduce some mutation in this chemical reaction network. And we consider two particular class of mutation. The first one is a loss of function mutation. So the idea is that we want to model a mutation that somehow inhibit one protein within our network. The, what we did was, okay, we, uh, we take an elementary species that was one, one of the species of the proteins that were associated to the, to the minor of N that was equal to the identity matrix. And we explore, explore the fact that is an elementary species by observing that this means that it belongs only to one conservation law. And to model the fact that this protein is, in, is inhibited, we assume that, that the concentration of this protein is set to zero. And we do so by setting to zero the constant associated to the conservation law to which it belongs. So say for, if, for example, this was the set of conservation laws for the physio physiological cell. And if the protein we are considering belongs to the first conservation law, what we do is just is simply put into z to zero this constant. Formally, this can be generated by introducing a projector that is this P of LJ that simply takes a vector of a concentration. It split it between the elementary species and all the others one. It takes the, the, the X2 and set to zero the concentration of all the species involved in the right conservation law, and then it adjusts the, the, the elementary species by this equation. And this equation um, allows you to exactly find a, a, a value of the concentration that satisfies this modified system of conservation laws. As for the gain of function, this is the second type of mutation we consider. A gain of function means that, that instead, in this case, we take a protein of our network and we assume that the mutation somehow overexpress this protein. 
And the way in which we implement it was to by 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 say, okay, if a protein is overexpressed, it means that, for example, all the processes that, that could inhibit it are removed from the network. And this idea came from the fact that observing the chemical reaction network we have, we have that all the inhibition process of a, of a protein are of this form. So the idea is that you have the activated form of the protein that is P star. It, it interacts, for example, with an enzyme to form this compound. And then this compound is split in the protein that is not more active plus the enzyme that is kept invariant. And the idea is that to stop the inhibition process, we just put to zero this constant. Again, the nice thing is that this can be easily generalized through a projector that instead act while the projector for the loss of function was acting on, on the concentration vector, this projector acts on the stoichiometric matrix. And what it does is just remove the column of, of these stoichiometric matrix that are associated to the reaction that we want to remove. And this is equivalent to actually removing the reaction from the network. And the nice thing is that if we do so, but we are, uh, let's say, we pay enough attention to maintain the rank of the stoichiometric matrix, we have that the two stoichiometric matrix, the original one and the projected one, define the same, the same stoichiometric compatibility class. That for us is important because somehow the stoichiometric compatibility class is what um, helps us to define the equilibrium point. The other important thing is that this uh, projector can be easily uh, used also to model conca the concatenation of multiple mutations. And this is important because what we know from biology is that to have cancer is likely not enough to have just one mutation in the cell, but we have uh, to have multiple mutations that accumulate one after the other. To model this accumulation, of course, the most natural approach that may come in may came in mind is to operate an iterative approach. So we start from the physiological cell. So we have the system of body that describes the physiological cell and we compute the equilibrium. Then we take this equilibrium. In this case, we are, mod we are assuming that there are two loss. So we just modify the equilibrium by projecting through this projector and we have a new system of a new Cauchy problem from which we compute the new mutated equilibrium and then we implement the second mutation so we start from this new mutated equilibrium we projected it and we solve the system of OD to have the new equilibrium point point. and the nice thing is that if the, the global stability condition is satisfied then the order does not matter and this is important because for example we may not know uh, which was the order in which the mutation entered the cell somehow. But the other important thing is that this approach is very natural, very simple, but it's going to be very complicated if we have a lot of mutation. What is nice is that with our definition, what happens is that this can be actually the same, this, this iterative procedure that consists in solving one, one Cauchy problem for each mutation can be summarized by one single uh, Cauchy problem because the same steady state that we have, we could reach with those iterative procedures can be reached by defining Cauchy problem in which the stoichiometric matrix is modified by accounting for all the gain of function mutation we want, while the initial state is modified by accounting for all the lo loss of function mutation that we want. And again, what is very nice is that if by doing so we don't modify the rank of the matrix S and if the, the original chemical action network as well as the projected one satisfy the global stability condition, then the order of, in which we consider this mutation does not, does not matter. Because we, we does not matter in the sense that, of course, it will change the path that is um, that brings from the initial point to the equilibrium, but the final equilibrium will always be the same. To validate the, this model, we started from the chemical reaction network I, I show you some slides ago. So these are the numbers that were involved. So 
for n that is the number of protein, proteins is equal to 419 the, the number of reaction is 850 the number of conservation <coughs> of conservation laws is 81 and they satisfy this condition that was the important one while the stoichiometric matrix and the k were defined according to literature data this is a group from the hospital of san martino here, here in geneva who built this this uh, chemical reaction network and so starting from this chemical reaction network, the, third, the first things we did was to verify that it satisfied the global stability condition. Unfortunately, we are not able so far to do it analytically. So what we did is to verify it numerically. That means we generate a number of randomly drawn stoichiometric compatibility class. And we manually check if by starting from different points along this, this, this uh, class, we always ended up in the same equilibrium point. And so what we did was to draw, we draw 30 um, point on this class. We solved the corresponding Cauchy problem having that, those, that point, those points as initial point, we compute the equilibrium and we check that the equilibrium was always the same. We quantify this by computing the coefficient of variation, the mean and, and standard deviation over the proteins for the equilibrium point. As, as a reference, we, we also compute the coefficient, coefficient of variation of the initial point. And what was OK was that, OK, for the initial point, we have a quite high coefficient of variation. And this is OK. That means that we, we were good enough in drawing the initial point uh, in a different way along the surface, but then the, the, the equilibrium points are, are quite the same at the end. To validate the model, what we did so far was to, sorry, uh, was to quantify the, um, the effect of, of some of the most common mutation in colorectal cancers and that are the one depicted in this picture. It to quantify the effect of this mutation, we did something really, really natural because we start from the healthy network. So the original one proposed by Tortolin et al. And we compute the corresponding equilibrium. Then we mutated the network for, uh, by accounting for the, the mutation we want. And so we modify the stoichiometric matrix if we have a gain of function mutation we or we modify the initial condition if we have a loss in function mutation and we computed the corresponding equilibrium point. Then we quantify the difference between these two uh, equilibrium point by simply computing the relative difference for each protein. And, the, and in this way, we quantify which were the proteins within the network more affected by each one of these mutation. And this was something that we could check by using literature data. Of course, we use paper that were not used to build the King Correction Network. And the results were, were quite good. So we were able to, um, to predict things that were observing from the literature. But the, more, the, the other interesting thing is that we are not only able to model mutation, but we are also able to model drug in a really similar fash fashion of the way in which we did for mutation. I'm going a little bit fast on, the, on this, but I can come back if someone in is interested. And the idea is that if by, we can use this fact, for example, to help predicting which is a, a good amount of drug that, can, that has to be provided to the, to the network. How we did so? We did something similar to, to what we did for the mutation because we start from the healthy network. We introduced a mutation, introduced a mutation in this case, the gain of function of the protein KRAS, and we compute the equilibrium. And then we introduce the drug, but in introducing the drug, we account for different amount of drug that could be provided to the cell. And we check when, for which value of the drug, the, the equilibrium, the final equilibrium is more similar to the physiological one. And this is, for example, this is an example. The black line are the the difference between the mutated equilibrium and the physiological one, one while the color, colored line are the difference between the, the equilibrium after the drug has been introduced and 
the, the physiological concentration. And what you can see is that only when uh, this parameter regulates the, the amount of drug, uh, drug only for alpha equal to 0 0.75, the concentration, the, the delta goes close to zero. That means that the, the equilibrium after the drug is similar to the physiological one. While for other amount or either you have too much adverse effect because the concentration goes on the opposite with respect to the mutated one, or essentially the drug is, dying, is doing nothing because you, you have the same equilibrium as in the mutated cell. Okay, so this is uh, the model we introduced. Some preliminary result on the new uh, project we are working on is, okay, but what we have done so far is we want to compute the equilibrium of, of the cell. And to do so, we have written a system of ODE. We have solved it, so we have uh, computed the dynamic of the concentration, and then we have computed the equilibrium. But the fact is that we are not interested in the dynamic. We just want to compute the equilibrium, and to compute the dynamic may be time consuming. So what we observe is that, okay, if we are interested in computing the equilibrium, we may just want to find the zero of this function because we want to find when the derivative of x is zero. Of course, we have to introduce some constraint because we want, if we just take this, the first equation, so sv equal to zero, we are gonna have too much equilibrium point. But if we have the global stability condition to have just one equilibrium point, we just, we, is enough to fix a stoichiometric matrix. So we put this constraint that X has to belong to the stoichiometric matrix, uh, sorry, the stoichiometric compatibility class defined by the initial point X zero. And then we have the positive constraint given by the fact that these X are concentration, say, so they have to be non-negative. Non this is a constraint uh, minimization problem. So we can use some Newton methods uh, uh, approach. But the fact is that <clears throat> this problem has some issue. One is, is that it, it involves very big dimension. And the second one is that the Jacobian in the equilibrium point is non-zero, but is close to zero. And so we use the globalized projected Newton method. These are very preliminary results, so they may be not completely true, not completely optimized, but if you have any feedback, it will be more than welcome on this part. So what we did is, okay, we, we observe that we have a problem of this type. So we, have, we want to find the zero of this functional. Here I have done a, a small trick to make the functional uh, squared, but uh, I, I go fast on this, but it's very fast. The idea is that we remove the elementary species because once we know the other ones, the elementary species can be easily computed. And, and okay, this is the problem we want to solve and we do so by using a Newton methods, a projected Newton methods in which we did a small trick for defining the projector because if we use the standard one in which to have, uh, I mean, the projector that we introduced to, to, to have the positive constraint, if we use the standard one in which the negative elements are, are set equal to zero, then we ended up having too much zero. And so what we did was to use this trick in which the, the component that are negative are just put equal to the value, to their value at the previous iterations. As I said, in, in our case, this method does not converge, or I mean, you have to really carefully choose the initial point to have convergency. And so, so far we have implemented the most simple globalized projected Newton methods in which we simply uh, don't move, um, or, or we, we reduce the step of, of it, the, the step of the, sorry, the, the step used to update the value, the, the, iter, the, the value at each iteration by this alpha, chosen in a way that we are sure that at each step we in some we um, we do better. So we we approach the zero of the function f. 
By do so, we, we are happy because if we compare this approach with the dynamic one, we do better. In which way we do better? What we did is we repeat 100 times a simulation in which we randomly draw a point on, on the rise stoichiometric compatibility class defined by the initial condition of the physiological cell. And we, in the first approach, we compute the equilibrium by solving the ODE system and taking the asymptotic value. While in the second approach, we use these globalized Newton methods. And what happens is that by using this globalized approach, we are able to converge 86 times over 100. But more importantly, of course, the Newton, the Newton approach is much faster than the dynamic one. And it provides solutions that are better in the sense that actually the, deri the, the derivative is closer to zero with respect to using the dynamic approach. And the, 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 the equilibrium actually belongs to the right stoichiometric compatibility class. So while, of course, by, by simulating the dynamic, we can introduce some error for uh, such that at the end we may go a little bit far from, from the rise stoichiometric compatibility class. So to conclude, uh, what we did was to present a model for two, kind, two type of uh, mutation, loss and kind of function mutation. We validated it on uh, a network device for colorectal cancer cells and uh, we are now working on find a way to make more efficient the way in which we compute the equilibrium point. Which are the future work we have in mind instead is, first of all, we would really like to have an analytic proof that our chemical reaction network satisfy the global stability condition. More interesting, but also very much more um, challenging is we would like to have a kind of semi-automatic tool for generating new chemical reaction network. What this means is that what, uh, before I say, we starting from this chemical reaction network and this chemical reaction network was built by a group in San Martino by re reading a lot of literature, but really by reading and manually writing down the reaction the reaction networks the reaction the chemical reactions so what happens if we are interested not in in colorectal cancer cell but for example in lung cancer we have to start all over again and this may take time but for example we can uh, prevent from manually reading the paper by using some natural language processing approach and this is something we would like to investigate Sorry. And finally, another important thing we would like to, so far we have validated our results by using literature data. What we would like to do is to use some kind of experimental data to, to validate the number that we obtain, or at least uh, to validate the, the, the difference we obtain by introducing a mutation or a drug in our network. And this is almost all, so thank you for your attention. Sara, a virtual crop has started. Thanks. So, um, do you have any questions or comments? Are you curious about something? Could you have a, have a question? Sure. Yes. So, I'm Giovanni Nadi. First of all, thank you for your very clear talk. And it's a curiosity because you spoke about numerical simulation and I think you have the same problem. So no negative solution and you have to introduce some constraint in your numerical solution by using ODA. So I think you have exactly the same problem as in your last final uh, algorithm of Newton. So if you want to solve numerically the ODA, you have to introduce non-negative constraint you have to introduce conservation law constraint. Otherwise, you, uh, you have in, in trouble because it's not possible to simulate in an appropriate way the, the system, is, is, is my guess, eh? I don't know. So 
a view more detail about your numerical simulation of the DA. And uh, second remark is about the uh, experiments because I think that you need uh, um, a lot of data, <laughs> okay? Because it's a very big, but uh, in reality, you have some sampling or something in some part of the network. I mean, some sampling of species of in some part of, an, of a network, not in a whole network. So I think it's a, it's an art problem. <laughs> okay. So my curiosity is about the numerical scheme for the... Okay. Um, okay, thanks for the very interesting question. Uh, okay, for the numerical for the numerical solution, let me share again the screen so I can. Okay, move. I'm not very fast in sharing the screen, but okay. So, I have to say we. It's true what you say. So I know that there are methods to to um, force somehow the solution, for example, to satisfy the um, this condition that is to belong to the stoichiometric uh, compatibility class. But we didn't enter too much in detail in this because we were lucky enough. I'm explain myself. The way in which we introduce a constraint to belong to the um, right stoichiometric compatibility class is by defining the initial point, because this tells you which are the surface in which you want to move. Then we we simply really use the, the standard MATLAB function. I don't even remember the names. So it's really, but it's the stand more standard. I think something like OD15, something like that. And, and then afterwards, I checked if the, 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 the dynamics be, belong, it always belong to the right, right stoichiometric compatibility class and if the positivity constraint was satisfied. And with the number we had, that was true, except for very few situations in which when I did this big, I mean, when I did this experiment, I take very strange number for the, for the constant of the conservation law. And in those cases, when, for example, I put some conservation law in, in very unrealistic value, then it, took, it could happen that at the end, the path didn't uh, be lo always belong to the, to the right stoichiometric compatibility class. So what I'm trying to say is that we didn't enter too much in detail in optimizing the way in which we simulate the dynamics because for the realistic value, this was not necessary because by imposing the right initial condition, we were lucky enough to always stay on the, on the right surface and to always satisfy the positivity constraint. But I agree with you that this is something that can be, um, can of course be uh, worth study. I don't know if this answers your question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> as as far as for the numerical simulation, I agree totally with you. This is why we didn't, the, the experimental simulation, I mean, this is why we were not able so far to do it because it's not able, it's not easy to find a someone working in biology that is able to provide us all the things we need. Uh, one difficulty is that, as you say, um, for example, is not, but this is also one thing is a difficult, but I think is something good of our method. I mean, uh, when you do the experiments, you are not able to compute the concentration of all the proteins. But for example, you are able to do this Western block, uh, block, block uh, box, in which you have some, for some protein, you know if they are more or less phosphorylated. This can be used to validate our model, but what we claim is that our model can give you more than this, this experimental setup because it actually can give you the, the behavior of all the proteins. So I agree with you that it's difficult to find some experiment to validate it, but once we have validated it, it may be very, um, very nice exactly because we can simulate more than what we can actually see by doing the experiment. And so, and, and this, of course, I don't want to say that we can 
substitute the experiment, but we can guide the experiment to work better because then we can suggest what to look at. No, in fact, my final remark is uh, I support your model. I mean, it's possible to use the data if you have, and it's possible to see where it's not possible to measure. <laughs> exactly, exactly, that, exactly. That is what is. That is what uh, we hope. Exactly. That's exactly. Thank you. Thanks. Do you have any other questions? Marco. I have, I have actually more than question, I have curiosity. Let's start with, I can say, putting my hands forward. I know nothing about <laughs> okay. every, all the initial part of, of, your, of your study. And it was very interesting, but of course I cannot tell anything about that. But I know a few things about optimization. So I was curious about the, the very last part in which you try to use that projected Newton method to solve your bound constraint optimization problem, because that's what I see. Okay, probably so. you are my, I'm not very expert in studying Newton method, so we can merge our expertise. Yeah, because, okay, I, I have a, couple, a few, few curiosities because- okay. I can share okay. again if, let me share if I'm- Because what, the first point is that Newton method can be arbitrarily bad when projected because uh, in in general case if you have a very smooth function with bound constraints projected neutral method is not guarant guaranteed to convert to the solution and in order to make it converge you need to have some tricks on the on what you consider active in the sense that instead of having of considering active what is actually zero you need to consider active what is so you need to consider zero stuff that is close to zero because a naive projection on the positive portant it's arbitrarily bad in with, with newton method so it's likely that there could be some things you can do in order to obtain something which behaves in a more reliable way, let's say, in the solution of your problem. And so this was just, you know, a remark in the sense that maybe there is something you can do to overcome the fact that sometimes it doesn't work very well. And maybe having some fix on your model, which is different from the heuristic you found in which you set, in which you fix the values which are not positive and you move just, and you, pro, and you keep what is greater than or equal than zero. So the pseudo projection, let's say. But it was, I don't know, just a, a remark. And then the question I wanted to ask is, is it, it is actually easy to compute the Jacobian here it is worth the so. e, uh, okay it is i, okay. I want to say um what you say is exactly what's happening so if you have something to suggest me it's more than welcome because this is it was the first things that came in my mind because yeah. it was true that by simply projecting over the positive orthant what happens was that essentially my, the algorithm started exploded because a lot there there uh, the things or oh, oh, everything was going to zero and so and the yeah. problem was that when so many things were zero and then the, the Jacobian starting be ill-conditioned and and, yes. and starting be zero and so everything went yes, yes. crap why yeah, but by... the, the Jacobian is easy to is is easy to, easy to, to compute is it's it really work? easy because hmm. I can tell you why uh, I go to the example because it's easier with the numbers. If you look at these metrics, the Jacobian of these metrics is, this is S times V. So the Jacobian has is constant. It just goes away. Okay. And here you just have some 
a set of mon monomials. So it's really yeah. easy because then you, j I mean, I, I have implemented a sort of symbolic way to do it because you just yes, have yes, to. Yes. So it's I super see. easy the, to okay. compute the Jacobian. But it, it can be ill conditioned when you start it, having yeah, it, zero it, value. It, and also, since anyway, you, I mean, the Jacobian of this part is very sparse because okay. they are monomial and they have up to two terms. Okay. So it's very sparse. And, and that means that uh, even though that the equilibrium point is not zero, it anyway is very small, so it's close to zero. So this is, the, is another reason why it's not, even though it's easy to be computed, you have to be careful when you- Yeah, I see. With Newton methods. Yeah, yeah maybe, Another alternative to using a projected new. So, if you have troubles in uh, when you start having component too many components actually equal to zero, another solution could be to use an interior point method. Okay. Of a, let's say you write a, 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 reformul a reformulation of your problem. If you have the, the the interior point method is too powerful to handle just bound constraints, but still, since you have barriers, you never actually put anything to zero. And the right interior point method could allow you to go to the solution actually pretty fast if it's well tailored, let's say. So it, it could be an alternative if you have too much trouble with projected neutral method, but maybe you can maybe one first thing you could try to do is to play a little bit with com actually convergent scheme, let's say on Newton method and see what happens. I, I can try to see if I can send you some reference maybe. Oh, I have to find some newest, newer one. Let's say there is a very old paper of 1982 or 1986 about the project Newton method, which tells you that you have to be careful with projection. Maybe there are some newer references, but I will keep in mind. Maybe it will be interesting also for me to 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 see, just to to know, you know. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Okay, I think we have time for one last quick question. If we have one from the audience. Okay, I guess no. So we thank again Sara for an interesting talk. And I must say that uh, um, I think that this is maybe the first time where we have seen uh, actually what can be the benefits of <laughs> this uh, Primo network, a true interaction and exchange of opinion. So I'm thank happy you again, Sara. Oh, and it's not the very first time. But... Well, okay, my memory <laughs> has to be bad, so, but no, that's it. But it's good, yeah. Primo exists for this purpose, right? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Pasquale, you can stop the recording, I think.